Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Really, it's our channel, although it's been a while since Ryan and I have actually vlogged anything together. There's just been so much going on, obviously, as you know, over the past few months, going through my second miscarriage and um, everything that comes after that. So really today, I wanted to talk about kind of basically doing like an update on where we stand, what I've been doing um, since getting all of my test results back and some other test results that I had done after my last video. So I wanted to talk about those things. But I also wanted to say, if you're new here and you haven't heard my story, Basically, my husband and I, we got pregnant um, last November of 2017 and then lost that pregnancy in January of 2018. Then we waited like 10 months to get pregnant again because we were going to a friend's wedding of which we were actually perform performing for, performing for. We were taking a cruise over there, so we decided to wait until after we got back from the cruise to really start trying again. However, I did end up getting pregnant uh, like a week before going on the cruise. So um, I found out that I was pregnant the day we got back home. So I had no idea that I was pregnant while we were on the cruise. I unfortunately miscarried again. This is my second miscarriage. I've been pregnant two Novembers in a row now and literally it was like a week's difference. So, so it's kind of sad looking back at some of the pictures and video that I have from the cruise. Anyway, the tests that my OBGYN tested me for were for any blood coagulation disorders like factor V laden, throm thrombosis, I think it's called. Um, and then a couple, whatever other ones that there are. He also tested me for MTHFR. There's, there's two other things. I should probably grab my paper, but it's okay because the only other one that matters is um, like the immune, um, any like autoimmune disorders, which all of those came back normal except for the MTHFR. I do have one gene variant, which is A12. A1298C. For those of you who don't know what MTHFR is, it's basically um, you're lacking an enzyme, I think, or a protein to break down folic acid or folate. So it's called the methylate, methylization or methylation process of folic acid or folate. When you have something like this, um, luckily for me, I have the lesser of the two variants. So there's another variant that is titled C677T. And basically you can have one of each. You can have two copies of one or the other. Um, I am heterozygous for A1298C. So I only have one copy which is really good because that means that my body is actually processing folic acid at a 70% rate rather than 30% or 40% or somewhere in that range. I actually feel very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Relieved. <laughs> I feel very relieved that it is only the one copy and it is that copy. So that specific variant, sorry. What I started doing before even getting those results, because I was kind of wondering if they were testing me for MTHFR, although they didn't tell me they were, I was taking rainbow light prenatals, but then I came to find out that they have folic acid in their prenatals. So I was like, I need to switch because I heard that folate is way better for you anyway. Um, especially if it's methylated folate. You want either methylated or L-methylated. There's all kinds of different folates, but there are specific ones that you should be looking for on your prenatal vitamins. So when I first switched to a folate, folate prenatal, um, I was taking pink stork. Okay, this is how crazy I am. I was taking pink stork prenatals when I switched, okay? And I thought, this is great. It's methylated folate. It's exactly what I need. Somebody had said, you need to be taking L-methylated folate. I had no idea it was the same thing. So I ordered a new prenatal, um, Mama Bird, that brand actually, because theirs was L-methylated folate. So I'm like, okay, so I'll just make, like, make the switch. 
Well, then I found out again that L-methylated and methylated are really no different than each other. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just keep taking pink stork. But then I read some more about MTHFR and B vitamins and how you need specific B vitamins, which I'll go ahead and list them in this perfectly blank space right next to my head because the ones that pink stork had were not the ones that I needed. So these are the ones that I needed. These are the ones that I had, so I got rid of those. I really like the Mama Bird vitamins anyway. I'm happy that I accidentally made a second switch. <laughs> I want to talk about the test that I had done with my primary care doctor because I wasn't planning on having more tests done. The reason I went to my primary care doctor was because last weekend I woke up with what I call pus pockets on my tonsils. I will call them something different if somebody can tell me what else to call them but this is what I've called them my whole life. Just like the white things that come up when you have strep throat, tonsillitis, or a really bad virus. Sometimes I get them when I have really bad bacterial sinus infections, which happen quite often actually. I noticed last year that after my miscarriage, I was getting sick every other month, literally to the date every other month. I had strep throat over the summer, and then about a month and a half later, I had gotten sick again with something else, and then I was sick right before the cruise. So anyway, I decided I'm gonna call my primary care doctor and just see if she can take a look at what's going on. Maybe it has something to do with my immune system being down because of the miscarriage. So I got some labs done. She tested me for all kinds of stuff, and I know that most of it's pretty generic, but I was glad about a couple things that she tested me Four, which number one was my thyroid. I had my thyroid checked. I also had my vitamin levels checked. That includes B vitamins, D vitamin, folic acid uh, level, or folate. And then she also tested me for my immunoglobulin levels. So there's three different kinds. There's IgA, IgG, and IgM. All of them came back normal except for my IgA. My IgA levels were low. So she was saying that I don't have a severe case. Like it just basically is showing where I have trouble fighting off upper respiratory infections and sinus infections and also oral infections. My thyroid guys, came back absolutely perfect. I am in the 0.9 range. So I have heard that when you're trying to conceive, especially for my age group, that they really would like to see your level below one. So mine is 0.9, in the 0.9 range. I can't remember exact, the exact number, like 0.92 or something like that. I consider that to be very healthy from what I have read. If I am wrong, you can let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm in a good, normal, healthy range. So that I was very happy about. Um, the other thing that came back low was my vitamin D level. So she had me taking an extra vitamin D supplement. What else came back? Folic acid, my B vitamin levels, all came back completely normal, all within healthy range. So everything came back normal, guys. Like for the most part, I'm normal husband's home. Hi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so obviously I've told you what I've been taking. I've been taking the Mama Bird prenatals. The um, vitamin D that I've been taking is actually the Thorn brand. It got one of like the best reviews on Amazon and everybody's testimonies seemed really cool on there so I decided to give that a shot. Um, and then also I am taking a baby aspirin once a day and then other than that the only other changes that I've made have been just eating way healthier because I have taken out so many things that involve folic acid. So think about anything that is enriched grains or enriched flour and the things that are made with those things. So crackers, pretzels, any of those kinds of things, cake, I mean, you name it, like it has folic acid in it. But the good news is you can have gluten-free options. So those things do not have folic acid in them. Or if you're like me, you like to make things from scratch, you can use almond flour. There's all kinds of different um, ways that you can get around your intake of folic acid. So as far as everything else, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I've been doing. Um, Ryan and I, we aren't exactly like 
trying right now, but um, we aren't preventing. So we're kind of like at this point, whatever happens, happens. For us, it's the best stance to take. For me, it's the best for my peace of mind and to know that I am doing enough because I have had days lately where I'm like, this is never going to happen for me because I'm just not good enough for this to ever really take place. And that is so wrong. That is a lie that I tell myself. So if you're going through the same thing, don't feel that way at all. Um, I really don't think that there's anything that I could have done differently with my first two pregnancies other than what I'm doing now, which might not even contribute to if we do have a successful pregnancy. Anyway, I just wanted to share the update with you guys and pretty soon we'll be in the two week wait. Actually within like five day, four or five days we'll be in the two week wait realm. So be expecting some updates along the way. So thanks again for watching. You can subscribe if you'd like or follow me on Instagram. That's at Christina May Blog.